What is up Gato Squad? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Elias and if you are new here and like daily car content, consider subscribing by hitting that button below. So today, uh, it's a very very cold day today. It's 32 degrees or 31 degrees, basically zero degrees centigrade. It's freezing, literally. So uh, today, you know, I thought it'd be a great time to share another news segment with you guys since a lot has been happening in the news this past week. So we got a lot to cover and at the end, we're gonna have a possibly frosty beverage review. I'm not sure if it's gonna be frosty or warm, but it's definitely gonna be quite tasty. So if you wanna stay all the way to the end of that, of course, there's gonna be a segment for that as always. So uh, stay tuned for that and let's go ahead and get started with the news. All right, guys, it's an exciting day for news. We got a lot of news to talk about. And uh, first things first, let's talk about my most interesting and my most exciting news for me, at least, is that there's a very cheap Civic Si available right now. No, Honda did not lower the price, but they kind of, sort of did. Uh, right now, you can walk into any Honda dealership and say, hey, I want a Civic Si, and you can get it as long as you're a qualified buyer, meaning you have a good credit score, uh, for around $275, that's after fees and taxes and, and, and you know, there's a down payment, there's a $2,000 down payment or something like that. Uh, around 275 a month will get you a Civic Si sedan or coupe in your garage. I think that's pretty damn awesome uh, that Honda's doing that, and that's because two things. So for the lease, uh, the residual value of the Si is pretty high. It's 58%, which is higher than most cars. Uh, what that means is that the, the car retains its value for longer. And if you've owned Hondas before, you know that's very true. Uh, the other thing is that Honda is giving some incentives for the end of the year to clear out 2017 uh, Civic SIs. So if you want an SI, right now is the time to buy. Go out and get one. I would love to get one. I actually thought about getting one uh, for a quick five minutes, but then I'm like, do I really need another Civic? <laughs> I probably don't. I don't need another sporty Civic. I have a Type R. Why, why, am, I, why am I even thinking about this? Uh, that's because it's such a it's such a cool deal. 200 to 300 bucks for a really nice Civic SI, 12,000 miles, and you can give it back at the end. I don't know, that's pretty cool. So like I said, if you haven't yet and you want an SI, go and get one right now. Great deals on it. In the same vein, we got the Nissan GTR. We got a cheaper Nissan GTR. Now, in case you, you don't know, the Nissan GTR came out around 2014, 2015 in the US, uh, and it was uh, a giant killer. It was it's Godzilla, it's called Godzilla for a reason. And it was only $70,000 back in 2015, 2014, 2015. And it was, that for that price, it was insane. You know, it was basically Corvette money, and you could you could run it against Lamborghinis, you can run it against Ferraris, and you would do really well against them, and that's pretty cool. Well, since then, the price has creeped up a lot, and unfortunately, nowadays, uh, you you would have to do, spend around 110 or 115 thousand dollars to get a GTR or more. The Nismo cost 175 thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. But uh, Nissan is kind of saying, well, we're not selling a lot right now. Why aren't we selling that many? Uh, you know, first of all, the Nissan GTR is a bit old now. They did refresh it. There's a few more aero bits, but it's basically the same engine and the same everything else under it. Uh, it is a hand-built engine, though. It's pretty cool. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's 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 pretty much supercar uh, stuff that's uh, going into there. But uh, so they, they listened to their customers and said, you know what, let's cut the price again. So now for right now, you can get a Nissan GTR for around $100,000, you know, 99965 or something like something crazy. Uh, $100,000 will get you a Nissan GTR. And that's pretty damn cool for a really, really nice, powerful car. Now what they're cutting to do that, uh, they're taking away uh, the Bose speaker system. You won't have uh, no active noise cancellation and you won't have engine noise enhancement from the speakers. Uh, you also lose the titanium exhaust. Now, how do I feel about losing the speakers? Great, I don't want those speakers anyway, and I don't want enhanced noise coming through my car either. So I want I want to hear the actual engine, no matter how it sounds, and I want to hear what the car is telling me, not what the speakers are telling me. And if you know me, I don't really care too much about in-car music. It is what it is. Uh, I drive sports cars, so road noise in sports cars is gonna overpower anything anyway. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to take away the speakers, take them away. Uh, how do I feel about losing the titanium exhaust? Yeah, you know, I would kind of like that, but for $10,000, $15,000, you can keep it. I'll do my own exhaust anyway. So, you know, for uh, Nissan GTR buyers or people that want a Nissan GTR, again, now is the time to go buy it. Uh, you can go on the website right now and it shows them for $100,000. So I'm um, sure if you go to the dealership, you can get one right now for about $100,000 and that's a great car for that price. 
All right, so moving on uh, now to American Muscle News. The the brand new Corvette ZR1 was leaked. So it hasn't been officially revealed, but now we know quite a bit of information and uh, we've seen the pictures of it. And uh, we can see, you know, it's got a few extra duct work. It's got some cooling ducts and things like that that uh, the Z06 does not have because it also has 100 extra horsepower. It has 750 horsepower from its uh, supercharged V8, which is pretty awesome for an American muscle car. I can't wait to see it on the track. I can't wait to, to hear it and, and to know more about it. Uh, all enthusiasts should be pretty excited that the ZR1 is confirmed, it's coming out, and we know the specs, and it's really cool uh, to know what it is. And uh, yeah, so uh, that's pretty cool with the American muscle side. Now, uh, to change it up a little bit, a little bit of sad news, the Ford Focus RS, uh, they're having a lot of issues. Now, I did report on this back when I was comparing the Type R to the Ford Focus RS. In case you didn't know, when I was shopping for my Type R, I, I definitely shopped around. I looked at the 370Z, the Mustang, the Camaro, I looked at uh, some BMWs, I looked at the Ford Focus RS, the STI, and uh, the Ford Focus RS was like number three, right behind the STI. Uh, number one was the Type R because it won. And, uh, you know, I was looking at the RS, I'm like, wow, it's an awesome car, 350 horsepower, all-wheel drive, uh, it's got the hatchback, just how I like it, not as roomy as a Type R hatchback, but it's, it's good enough, and I love the looks of it, I, I really think it's a great car, and it sounds amazing as well. So, uh, the reason I didn't get it was because I heard there were some reliability issues that haven't been really um, ironed out yet, and uh, today, there's uh, quite a few people talking about it online, on YouTube, and on uh, uh, news websites, like car news websites, saying, well... A lot of people are reporting issues, and it's not just uh, the, the engine cracking issue, it's actually uh, worse than that, it's a head gasket issue. gasket of the RS looks like to be having issues uh, with wearing down too quickly so within 10 or 15 or 20 or 30,000 miles the head gasket gets worn out and the engine starts burning coolant which is not good for an engine and that's why I think some of those engines are cracking uh, under pressure or, or under you know they're not operating properly so they'll start burning coolant they'll overheat it's not a good situation um, unfortunately, there's not much they can do with the design. It's, it's probably very, going to be a very expensive fix uh, to get this uh, work done because uh, it's just a very small amount of room that the top of the engine has to work with in terms of, uh, of head gasket placement. And uh, I don't know what they can do. So it's just kind of one of those design flaws that needs to be worked on and I don't know how they're going to do it. But uh, yeah, a lot of people have been complaining about it and Ford knows it's a problem. They're working on it. Uh, they, they, they haven't said there's a fix yet. Uh, so if a customer has an issue, go to the dealership, get it worked on by them. Uh, I've seen a lot of people get uh, new engines. I've seen people get uh, new heads installed of the engines with new head gaskets installed. And, uh, you know, to varying degree of success, some people have the same issue again. And that's, you know, it's gotta be, that's gotta be bad. You know, it's, it's, it's a sports car, so you wanna, you wanna drive it as it's supposed to be. And as with anything, the more abusive uh, driving you give it, the worse any issues are gonna get. And I'm sure these cars are not being driven easy. You know, they're not designed to be driven easy, so I'm sure they're not. I, if I had one, I would definitely be driving it hard. And I would most likely have this issue too. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. The Ford Focus RS, unfortunately, is having those issues. Hopefully, Ford can figure it out. Um, I think they're going to stop production soon anyway, so I don't know if they're going to continue to to, uh, to look this over. Maybe they'll just cover it through the warranty and just leave it at that. We'll see. Time will tell. Um, and then the last bit of news, uh, some motorcycle news uh, for you fellow motorcycles out there motorcyclists I know you're still out there from my uh, my motorcycling days uh, the Africa twin is basically getting a little refresh so uh, the Africa twin is coming out with an adventure sport model and uh, it adds uh, quite a few things the most important of which I think is a bigger gas tank uh, 1.5 gallon bigger gas tank that's huge for a motorcycle that's gonna extend your range by a whole lot around I'd say 60 miles that's great for an adventure sport bike and that's pretty much needed for an adventure sports bike to be honest with you so uh, other than that uh, it's got a, an inch more clearance it's got a different seat and it's got a bunch of other cool stuff that it has added to 
uh, the bike that uh, make it really cool. I've always loved the Africa Twin. I'm a big fan of the Africa Twin, and I'm glad that Honda's still selling it and they're improving on it uh, because uh, they're addressing basically the issues that customers uh, have had on it. And who knows, maybe one day I'll actually buy one. All right, guys, that pretty much closes it up here for the news segment. Uh, stay tuned for that frosty beverage review. All right, guys, I just came in from the cold and I'm ready for my frosty beverage review. So today I got uh, something special that I've been wanting to try for a very long time. It's called Unibrow Ephemere, or Ephemere. It's brewed in Canada, Montreal, I believe. And I'm gonna take recommendation from one of the subscribers. He says, always pour the beer in a glass, and I will. So let's go ahead and open it up and uh, pour this beer in. Look at this cool little like wrapping on top of it. Look at, look at that. Mmm, smells delicious. So it's a beer brewed with apple juice, it says. Pretty interesting. It's a natural beer fermented in the bottle. So, should be very interesting. Very bubbly. Take a look at that pour. It smells so good. Very fruity and beer-like. All right, it's time for our first taste. Very good. First impressions. Tastes like it was definitely brewed with apple juice. It's got kind of that Mott's apple juice type of flavor. Which is very interesting in a beer. It's a 5.5% alcohol. Yeah, it's pretty good, refreshing. Not exactly a winter beer, but I like this type of beers. Easy to drink. It smells amazing. Let's take a look at the label here. As you can see, it's very faded. 5.5% alcohol. Very cool, from Canada. Very good. If you like Mott's apple juice and you like beer, you're probably gonna love this one. Alright guys, that about does it. Thanks for watching as always. If you haven't yet, please go ahead and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.